your conversations on Nurse One. This is Mary Wheeler. And I'm Gail Donner. Over the past year, we've been responding to nurses' career questions through Ask a Career Coach. This month, in conjunction with Nurses Week, we're introducing a new feature, an opportunity to meet nurses across Canada and find out about their exciting careers and how they're pushing the boundaries. This month, I have the privilege of introducing an interesting nurse from Toronto, Chris Kevel, who's going to talk to us about his career story. Why don't we start by you telling our audience, Chris, what your current work is? Well, I, I wear a number of hats. Most importantly to me is that I'm a bedside nurse. I work in critical care at Toronto General Hospital in the Med Surge ICU. There's always something new. Things are always changing. It's extremely rewarding. And being able to, to be there for people and use my skills to really, I think, the highest level. My other hat is within technology particularly within healthcare and technology. I do consulting through my consulting company, Sector Media, around electronic charting, consulting around how technology affects other healthcare practitioners' lives and helping people integrate technology with their business, like Donna Wheeler with their website and other uh, adventures uh, in technology. It's, it's really quite exciting. And being able to have a, a balance and a blend of that it's really very rewarding for me to be able to see different sides of things at the same time, how my decisions wearing one hat affects myself and my coworkers on the one hand, and then to bring how that affects myself and my coworkers back to the technology people, bridging the gap between technology and healthcare. Sounds like in some ways, it looks like two separate careers, but for you, it's one career. These are two parts of the kind of difference or the kind of impact you want to have on uh, patients, on nurses, on families, etc., on healthcare. So very interesting. Maybe uh, it would be a good time for you to talk a little bit about how you got to where you are when you began in nursing. Tell a little bit of your career story, as Mary and I call it. Well, I started in nursing. I graduated in 1998 from the University of Toronto. Um, I went from there straight into ICU. I was fortunate enough to get a job uh, in ICU right away. I worked in ICU from, I guess, 98 until 2001. Uh, at that point, I accepted an offer uh, in nursing informatics. However, where I was working didn't allow me to both work nursing informatics and also work bedside at the same time. It was sort of one or the other. Reflecting after about eight months, I decided that, as I expressed earlier, I really loved the bedside. It was why I became a nurse. It really did something for me. And it was your place. It was my place. I then made the decision to go back to bedside. Going back to bedside, I worked very briefly full time again. And then I had an offer to help out the technology people at the hospital with integrating uh, the health records. In order to do that, I accepted a consulting position. And that consulting position has taken me a number of different places uh, and with exploring different aspects of technology and nursing. It allowed me to bring a balance. So Mary and I talk a lot about being able to seize opportunities and uh, to seize them, you have to recognize them. It sounds that's a little bit like what happened to you. You, you have these uh, two interests, which some people might see as competing, but which to you were not at all, were very congruent. This might be a good chance to just digress for one minute. I'd like to know how you define technology, because it's such a big word and it means a lot of different things to a lot of people. So when you think of technology and you talk about it as a piece of nursing practice, if I could put it that way, define it for me. I, I think it really is any tool that helps you get your work done. A hammer is a piece of technology. Most people think computers and robots and mm -hmm. all that sort of really high tech, but it doesn't have to be. And it's really about change. So that when we started charting more and more documentation, I think that was an implementation of a technology. It was pen and paper, but mm -hmm. it was an implementation of technology. And now we're seeing 
a new technology, that being computers, help do our job even better. Now, that said, it's, it's more, again, it's, it's more about the culture of change and taking a technology that, that has the possibility of making things better and making sure it fits into uh, the nursing work life and healthcare work life. Too often I've seen things sort of, uh, for lack of a better term, ram down people's throats mm -hmm. and that ultimately those fail or the healthcare people find a creative way I don't want to say around, but to utilize things in a different way that perhaps wasn't initially intended. It's a much better process to work collaboratively with the people that will be using the technology and uh, moving it forward. I think healthcare technology today is where banking was probably in the mm. early 80s. Um, it, it's healthcare is such a more complex area. A banker may. <laughs> object object to that, yes, but uh, uh, it, it really is a much more complex area. So integrating technology into that provides unique challenges, as well as our healthcare system today. It really is maxed out, and trying to introduce change into a system that's already running in almost a crisis mode is exceptionally challenging. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, our goal is to help reduce that feeling of crisis on a constant basis, but trying to introduce change, change is always a challenge regardless of what industry you're in. Mm -hmm. And that change is gonna cause stress for the, the frontline workers and everyone really in between. Well, it strikes me then all the more reason why someone like you who really does have the appreciation, not just for the practice, and where technology could be used to improve practice, but, but for what the life of a nurse is like, what the practice of a nurse is like, how it feels. I think uh, having someone like you, who's not there as the outsider technology expert, but is there as one of us, if I could put mm -hmm. it that way, must be a terrific advantage. You know what you need to do to help nurses use technology, but you also know what technology nurses need mm -hmm. and how it might work. Yeah, I really think that, you know, knowing the possibilities and the limitations mm. are key and how things might fit in. I tell people on a regular basis, I learned a lot first becoming a nurse. I learned a lot more going into nursing informatics and learning more about the technology. But I think I learned the most going back to the bedside after having been in the technology mm -hmm. for a little while. And on an ongoing basis, you know, it, it's, it's such a creative process to be able to think, what are the possibilities here as I'm sitting bedside uh, or standing bedside or doing whatever I'm doing <laughs> bedside. And uh, Probably not sitting much. <laughs> no, unfortunately. <laughs> um, it's It really does bring insight that just isn't possible, even the smartest, most brilliant of workflow analysts, I don't think could see those possibilities without having stepped into the shoes of uh, the person at the bedside. I'm, I'm interested in what made you decide to sort of go in this direction? Uh, I mean, you, you talked a little bit about why you chose nursing, but what, how did you get to see all this? Can you talk a little bit about how you... Well, technology... And I, I talk about technology in sort of a very broad sense has always intrigued me. Things, you know, I wanted to know how things worked. And that was really, you know, one of the things that helped me bring, bring me to nursing. Um, but also, I've always been sort of a computer geek. Mm -hmm. Not to say that, you know, I, I don't use that in a negative no. way. But it, it really does, the technology really does fascinate me. So then why didn't you go into computer science? Why did you go into nursing? Because I think the hard technology, while definitely interesting, it's, it's really the how things fit together. It's, it's sort of being that, that last piece in the puzzle. It's about bringing together cultures that really, for a lot of people, are sort of very different and bridging that gap and acting sort of as a translator between two groups. It's interesting. I haven't thought about this before, and I've known you a long time. And as you said, you do. Uh, you are an associate of Mary's and mine, and we count on you for lots of uh, technology and nursing input. But it strikes me that you've been a um, 
culture change you, if I could say in a lot of ways, you're a man in a predominantly female uh, profession, you're a technology expert in an area that has a love-hate relationship with technology that involves culture change. Do you ever think of yourself as in that way, as kind of pushing the boundaries? Or? I, 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 th I think I do. I, I, w I didn't think so much in, in terms of nursing. Nursing just seemed to be a natural uh, fit for me. But it definitely, I think, in, in other aspects of uh, my career, for sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could talk for a minute about um, what helped you get where you are. What are the conditions, what are the kinds of people, etc., that you need and needed in order to help you be able to uh, both combine these interests, but really it's integrate these interests. It's not just, as I said before, two separate Mm -hmm. uh, jobs. This is your career. This is how you bring nursing to where you want it to be. So what were some of the powerful influences? Or maybe you could talk a little bit about what have been some of the barriers too. Well, I, I think that one of the first times that I really brought technology together with nursing, uh, I was student still. With the, and I was involved with the Canadian Nursing Students Association. And back in, I believe it was 1995, when, you know, the internet was very young. Yes. Well, young from a, a populist perspective anyway. Um, with the Canadian Nursing Students Association was looking at starting a website. And uh, I helped them start that website along with a number of other people. And just happened to be sitting in a, a lecture and uh, Mary... Uh, was speaking and I just asked if uh, I could record the lecture and, and put it on the internet and, uh, af and Mary accepted and afterwards uh, Mary approached me and asked if I could uh, do a website for at that point it was Donner and Wheeler yes. not Donner Wheeler. I had forgotten that whole uh, that whole story. And uh, really it, that's what launched it and it really at that point myself and my business partner decided to start a company to, uh, to help design websites and maintain websites for clients and it really grew from there and at that point it was really still two separate careers um, and then as I explained earlier really I had an opportunity to integrate the technology with nursing. Now that said a number of people along the way that said you have to make a choice you know mm -hmm. you can't you can't be both bedside and what they considered management I really do think one of the key barriers, both what I consider artificial barrier, uh, this idea that you're either a bedside nurse or you're not, I is able to bridge that gap. But there's so many instances within nursing where, you know, you're a nursing educator or you're a bedside nurse, you're a nursing manager or you're a bedside nurse. It's this artificial dichotomy that just, I don't think needs to exist and shouldn't exist because primarily nursing is a practice-based profession. And just like I bring a unique perspective to the technology side, equally so the nurse educator working bedside at the same time in some sort of a blended role would bring, I'm sure, equal insight. It's a very uh, astute observation. I don't want to get on my own soapbox because this is your time, but uh, I think we haven't been um, open enough to our definition of what constitutes nursing work and how nurses should be defined. And I think when we think about all the generation X, Y, Z, etc., we need to really consider who are people who are going to choose nursing and how do we help nursing shape who they want to be as opposed to pushing them into holes or pairs, square pegs and round holes, etc. So I, that's a very interesting observation. What advice then would you give people who might want to pursue this kind of career? I, I think keep your mind open. Uh, I think obviously if you're interested in technology, you need to know about the technology. Learn, read, embrace it. At the same time, don't forget about your nursing side. Try to think of where will, does nursing fit in? Where, you know, how, how can this technology, whatever aspect of it you're looking at, affect the bedside, how does it fit into your workflow? How could it fit into your daily life? Would it slow down, accelerate? How would it affect it? What, what would be the barriers to 
you know, it being a help, what, what would cause it to be a hindrance? And it's really the same approach you take if you're providing what in the old days we used to call holistic care or patient-centered care. It's what is all this I know? How does it impact this particular patient, client, family, whatever, whatever the case may be? What about to employers? What message would you have? I think you've already uh, indicated uh, your, your views on that, but, but um, what would well, you I, say? I, I think that you need to provide opportunities for people to do blended roles. I think that you need to set an expectation that people need to do blended roles. You know, and I, I think that you, as an employer, you need to knock down the barriers to those blended roles. You know, whether that be policy, a union issue, whatever. Um, I really do think in order to move forward, we need to have a more practice-centered profession. And as people move up into these roles, that they have the ability to, you know, blend things together. And when I say blend, it's not a, a given ratio of spending 10% no. or 90%. You're going to have people along the continuum, you know, whether it be 80, 20, 50, 50, you know, there's, I don't think there's any set number. No. Lots of implications for education in this as well, in terms of what we tell people about what nursing is and what's possible within within the profession. Um, what's, what are you looking to do? What's your vision for where, where you want to be? Well, ultimately, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying where I'm right now. Uh, that I comes think, across loud and clear. I, I think I'm going to stay in this current role for at least the near future. Ultimately, I, I do think eventually I'll move into a management role. But again, it's it's going to be a management role where I'm looking to blend other aspects mm -hmm. in. So in some instances, you'll have to create that, yep. perhaps, because that probably doesn't exist exactly as you envision it. What would be the attraction of quote-unquote management? I think it's, it's looking at things from a much higher level. Right now, the work I'm doing is sort of very... It's, for lack of a better term, down in the trenches mm -hmm. doing the how do I build a particular order in this written on paper into a computer system? How do we best figure out how to get a device to the bedside? Like the sort of the nitty gritty um, doing. I think that there is an advantage and I, I've had some exposure to being able to step back from that, take a higher level look. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be able to start doing more of that. But again, not at the expense of seeing the difference that I make to my colleagues on a day-to-day -day basis. And to your patients, for sure. Yes, I'm definitely. For sure. Anything you'd like? Well, tell me about balance before we close. You, you're juggling a lot of balls. Some people say having a couple of roles and trying to blend them ends up like having two full-time jobs, even though theoretically that is not the case. How do you how do you achieve what everybody's talking about these days? Balance, if there even is such a thing. I think it's balance is more of self awareness. I think that balance is knowing your limitations and knowing when you're no longer effective. I I, I, I do work hard, but at the same time, I think I have a pretty good sense of where I am at any given point. Sometimes I I know that I need to step away and you know take a couple weeks vacation take off, get as far away from technology as possible. <laughs> um, I'm an avid camper and take as little technology along with me as possible, save for a nice uh, you know, Kevlar canoe. <laughs> oh, that's nice. So it's, it's, it's about knowing yourself and knowing when you're no longer being as effective as you could be. And, you know, it, and, you know knowing to have good friends, good family to be able to say to you if you've lost that perspective, you really need to take a break. And, you know, sometimes you do lose that internal sense. That's a very good place for us to end. I have to say that, of course, I've known you for a long time since you were a student at the University of Toronto. Uh, but uh, um, it's been a privilege, actually, to listen to you in one uh, short period of time describe what really is, I think, not only a meaningful career, in terms of an impact on health and families and patients, but also an inspirational career. So uh, I hope uh, the nurses who are listening to this have uh, 
uh, taken away a lot of uh, good messages. And uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. If it weren't for yourself and Mary, it really, it probably wouldn't have happened. Well, I'm not sure this webcast would have happened without something like Chris Kebbell. That was a great interview, you two. I've been sitting, listening in another room, and it just, it inspired me. Um, I hope everybody that's listening to this webcast also has felt that same inspiration. And for a more in-depth interview with Chris, go to the CNJ Journal this month, where there will be an interview in our column Career Talk. And it will tie into the theme for this month in the, in the Journal on Technology. So where are we going next with this webcast? Over the next three months, we've got some three exciting um, possibilities in store. We're going to interview a new recruit. Um, and uh, the next in the next month, we'll then go and interview a mid-career nurse and someone in late career. We always believe that we all in nursing move along a career continuum. We enter into the profession. We um, get some satisfaction and then we look at where to next. So we're going to over the next three months inspire you with some additional interviews with nurses across